Okay, before we start, I hope you've eaten first because some of these pictures are going to make you not want to eat, maybe ever, again, in your whole life. Let's get into it. Whether you're a tenant or a property manager, there's one thing that's on your mind at the end of a lease. Is the security deposit refundable? Well, I don't know anybody who's gotten their full deposit back because most apartments will hire a cleaning service after a move out, but what about the money that's left over? The lines are pretty blurred when it comes to normal wear and tear versus what's considered excessive damage, so I took to Facebook and asked a group filled with property managers what they look for, and boy did they deliver. Let's go through and look at some of the examples they sent me. Okay, before we start, I hope you've eaten first because some of these pictures are going to make you not want to eat. Maybe ever. Again. In your whole life. Let's get into it. Christine says, I think this is wear and tear. No. Oh wait, that's an occupied unit's tub. And that's pretty gross. That's disgusting. That definitely qualifies as excessive wear. Right here we've got one resident asked me why they had a dirt floor under their sink, but it's rotten particle board, not dirt. Oh man. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> this one is caused by a guy falling in his shower, which I think would qualify as excessive damage. I know that if I fell in the shower, it probably wouldn't do that to my bathtub. Okay, right here is a good example of excessive damage. Blinds don't last forever, but having this much damage on just one set of blinds, and you look how many are missing, that's definitely something that's gonna come out of the tenant's pocket. This person says, Kid caused damage is not normal wear and tear. Damage is damage. If I go into a store and my child breaks something, no one may be surprised, but I still have to pay for it. Just because you think it's normal for kids to draw on walls doesn't mean I won't charge for that at move out. That's the thing. If you've got things on your walls, especially drawings, it's totally easy to just clean that up before you move, and they're not gonna hit you with anything like this. Okay, so this is good to know. Small scuffs on paint equal normal wear and tear. And as you can see, there are a couple scuffs here. And yeah, that's super easy to like, just grab a paintbrush and go over. The next tenant's not going to know the difference. All right, here we've got not normal and it's an old stove top that looks, it could use a cleaning to say the least. You've got a lot of gunk underneath the burners there, which is pretty easy to clean out if you just take the time within like a short amount of time after a bunch of stuff gets in there. I would say to clean underneath your burners at least once a month if you've got a stove like this. Okay, here's a good one. These blinds were not properly installed, so the resident is not at fault and they're not going to be charged for that because that's gonna be on maintenance or whoever installed those blinds in the first place. Now right here, we see a lot of stuff involving the carpet, mostly because carpet is really easy to ruin, especially if you have like a cat or something. This one has mold all over it, so obviously that's counting as excessive damage. You can see where the little tacks come up on the floor where the carpet grabs on. Here's one that's a little more subtle, so let's look at it. So the little chain that you pull to activate and deactivate the fan on these kinds of lights got ripped out. I've never pulled hard enough to actually rip out a chain from one of these, so assuming that these were new, it definitely lies on whoever did that to pay for it. So right here they say top and bottom left is normal wear and tear, and top and bottom right is not normal wear and tear. Hope this helps. I'd say that it does. You can see there are very obvious differences between the carpet and the flooring. Obviously that laminate is getting pulled up near the edge and that's gonna cost money to replace. Same with the carpet, it's got a urine stain right there and you can't really get urine out of carpet so they pretty much have to re-carpet that apartment. A lot of these comments are more on the excessive damage side but this one has a good guide on normal wear and tear. They say, normal wear and tear is small nail holes in walls, carpet shouldn't be destroyed, black stained, no pet urine, things are broken from normal wear and tear. Small scuff marks on paint is normal wear and tear, if they repaint and don't paint back to original color, that's charged. So here's one that would be excessive damage, but it wasn't because it was a reported AC leak. If it weren't reported, then it would have counted as excessive damage because it made a huge stain in the carpet. So make sure that if anything goes wrong in your apartment, you're reporting that to property management. Here are some very clear punch holes, some fist holes in the door. And again with the carpet, if it's getting torn up, that's probably gonna need to be replaced. 
and that's not going to count as normal wear and tear. Carpet should be lasting anywhere between 10 and 15 years. So to have this happen within the span of somebody living there, which is typically only about a year, um, that's really excessive, to be honest. Here we've got another bathtub that's extremely filthy. Guys, just clean your bathtub. Even if you're not trying to get your deposit back, you should clean the bathtub. Here's one. So we mentioned earlier that small holes in the walls from nails are okay. They count as normal wear and tear, typically. Unless it's otherwise stated in your lease that you can't put any holes in the wall, it should be covered. However, this person says, I think residents also need to know that something small like this isn't normal wear and tear either. And I would agree, they ripped the towel rod down from the wall and that's obviously going to cost money to put back up or to replace. Here's one, when the carpet is this dirty, you know that it's excessive damage. You can see where the bed was, which you shouldn't be able to tell that easily where it was. Maybe there are some indents in the carpet because you just moved, but when it's a clear cutout because of how dirty the rest of the carpet is, that carpet's gonna have to be replaced or washed excessively, but if I had to guess, this carpet is getting replaced. This looks like it was caused by an animal, which unfortunately for the tenant would still count as excessive damage. You don't wanna have a bunch of animal marks all over your apartment. Even if you own the place, you don't want that. So you should probably, you know, keep an eye on those pets. And there you have it. Hopefully your apartment doesn't look like a lot of these did because honestly, you probably won't be getting your deposit back if it does. The best way to make sure you're not getting blamed for something that you didn't do is to take plenty of pictures when you move in and just make sure you take care of the space while you live there. There's no reason why you shouldn't get your deposit back if you're taking care of the space and making sure that you report any problems that you have to management. And if you're a property manager, it's also on you to take pictures before the tenant moves in. Receipts are king when it comes to he said, she said, and regardless of which party you're in, they can save you thousands. But that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your refunds, and we'll see you next time.